Hey man, hey, how's it going? I'm nice James from you, uh, Gordon and Gordon the Whale. Gordon the website name. Man. I will and give logo. you a sticker. I want one. Is giving my ticket. Thank you very much, nice. sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this film is based off short story by Davy, who was right there. Yeah. Um, how hard is it, kind of adapting something? that um, is kind of true to life and it is short but you're taking it in a direction of making a full-blown film out of it and making it something that is you know fiction you know I mean the main goal is to just our main goal from the get-go the one of the first things I ever said <laughs> thanks man <I'll, laughs> that's awesome I want to know what he whispered to uh, yeah I know you'll never know <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> it's a secret and uh, you know you know the main the main goal was to be like and I told him this. I was like, I, I don't. I want to tell your the story, not necessarily like a Davy Roth story, right. you know. And that's why the character has a slightly different name. Yeah, it's just like loosely has, like, based. Yeah, loosely based. And the idea really was to take to say, you know, what is the best way to tell the story? It's right. not a biopic. It's not. We don't have any political history that we are owe the audience to right. or anything. So it was. It's more about the story and what's right for the characters, what's right for the narrative. And it, it's hard though because you feel a certain amount of responsibility. Yeah. And I'm glad for that, but at the same time, it's. Like, let's just cut it all out. Let's yeah. just make an, an entertaining film beyond truth or whatever. But incidentally and gratefully, the film ended up following. You know, like he, you know, when Davy saw the final, you know, saw some of the film, he was like, it was kind of, it was like that. The room looked like that, and yeah. never even talked about yeah. strange coincidences and characters that I made up that happened to be characters like in his life. So there was a certain amount of kismet there, like yeah. what was real and what wasn't, and how that all coincided. I'm really excited to see it. I haven't seen it yet, but Thank you, um, I hear, I hear the music is is fantastic and it plays a really big part. Was that something that, as you were writing, because I think a lot of films where the music sticks out, it's it's you had that music in mind when you were even in the script writing process. Oh, oh yeah, there's a couple of scenes. I mean, everything changes and as we shot it, but there's at least three scenes in the film that, like, when I was writing the scenes and thought of the scenes, the song I was listening to, the moment I thought of it, yeah, is the song that ended up in the film, and that's like the coolest, most privileged moment. To, yeah. Like, not only is it like fan service and the, like the, the bands you love, yeah, like, yeah, to be no, in a totally, movie, it's yeah. Like, but on, at the same time, it's uh, it, it's so there's an organic quality to it. Yeah. It's like you wouldn't have thought of that scene or that dialogue if it wasn't for that song. Yeah, totally. So, so, it's I know totally what you mean. Full circle. So I hope that you know our intention was to not have it feel like a mixtape, right. but to have it feel like that fit into it, and that was right. real and honest, as opposed to being like, oh, look at all these great indie bands. Yeah. You know? And to find a nice intersection. Just to like fit any bands in it. Oh yeah, no, I, yeah. I see, like I, sometimes I, I, when I watch the movie, I'm just like, I'm astounded, not by my work, but by yeah. the musicians yeah. that like, we got to have in there. It's like such an honor, so. What song do you feel like, last question, what, what song do you feel like totally kind of like sums up the film? We've got a Grizzly Bear song in the movie, yeah. and I think they're the best recording band alive. Yeah. <laughs> Which might be a little hyperbole, but I don't care because I love them so much. But they, uh, we have a song on a neck, on a spit in there, and it's like it's very understated, but at the same time it has a sort of like epic, big vocal claw. I don't know, and we we feature it prominently in the film, and so awesome. to me that that song is like is the movie, you know, kind of yeah. identify it with the movie. Cool, so. I'm excited, man. Cool, thank. Hey, what's it like? I mean, this film is based um, on an article by Davy yeah. um, from Found Magazine, which a lot of people are familiar with. Um, what's it like kind of playing a loose version of a real person but still coming from an acting standpoint and bringing your own thing to the table? Um, you know, it was really in the script. Uh, it, was kind of, it was kind of an architecture in the script that lend itself to the guy that I was playing. Right. So, I mean, it, 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 it was challenging because Davey's still alive and well here. Yeah, yeah. And so I, will, I certainly wanted to get his blessing. Um, he, he, really, um, he really helped me um, understand why he had this relationship, yeah. this contact relationship, and he yeah. was a tremendous asset to yeah. me. So I was just great. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of scenes um, with you just like on the phone um, that you're kind of having to go off of just voice acting. Um, how hard is that really to not have that kind of emotional connection with somebody like right there? You know what I mean? Really, that's great. That's one of the best questions uh, from an acting standpoint I've actually got. Very difficult because at first I was doing the phone. Yeah. The actual phone and, uh, and was the actress working. like we hired an actress who was very good and we put her off camera. She's always just off camera, either side, and I could feel her. Yeah. So we were really talking to each other. Yeah. She would, we would improvise and it was that's, okay. and it was yeah. it was really challenging but it did work. Yeah, cool. Very cool. Yeah. And Hurt Locker yeah, coming Hurt out Locker, soon. Yeah. You kind of like have in your filmography like you and Jarhead yeah. and you're a couple other yeah, is there something is that more a coincidence or is there something about like war genre films that you're drawn to? I mean I love war genre. Jarhead was a great film for me to work yeah, on with a huge cast. Yeah. 
but uh, no, I think it's the way I look uh, partially. But I've done. I think I'm done for a while. Oh yeah. Yeah, I want to come back and be like a colonel. Like a like, yeah. <laughs> so, awesome, man. Hey, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, the, uh, the so flip. flip thing? Yeah, so flip great, HD. Yeah. Dude, it saves me from carrying around like a huge camera or a cameraman. So, yeah, yeah. dude, you're a busy guy right now. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. What um. What's what's the appeal for you doing um, doing action films that have a sense of, of dramatic where you can really get into the character um, as an actor, but at the same time they have they have a lot of appeal um, as action films as well. Right, right. I mean, I, I, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Like SWAT was a lot of fun. Dude, I love SWAT, right? but it's not. Yeah. It doesn't have like, it, like the Hurt Locker is a little bit more realistic right. drama to it. It's. Um, the realism, you know, to me yeah. is a little more interesting because it's something I can kind of play with. And, yeah. And uh, it was a rich script, so. Yeah, I think SWAT's awesome, and it's just one of those guys movies that's like fun to like kick back right. and enjoy. But that's, that's a little bit more of a popcorn movie. Yeah, you don't totally. Have to think too much or totally. Whatever. And, but this Hurt Locker truly kind of affects you. Yeah. Gets your heart really racing. Yeah. Do you like playing the good guy or the bad guy better? Um, I like both. You like I both? Mean, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's only really, it's, it's a, I don't play him any differently, it's just perception. Right. Yeah, it's, I feel like there's limitations of, you know, always the bad guy. Yeah. There's limitations of, like, what roles are out there. You know? Yeah, totally. There's a lot better, right, like, anti-heroes. Yeah, so, well, cool, man. Hurt Locker's got a lot of buzz and, and on the festival circuit, so um, I'm, I'm excited to see it. And, and, yeah, it comes out pretty quick. So. Yeah, it does, so. We'll see how it, see yeah, how it does. Yeah, for sure.